wanted to wear them. Please tell me why you're feeling sad right now. Because she stole the glasses. Please. I wanted to wear them. These I did buy them for her, but these I are my glasses. To wear them. These are my glasses, okay? They're mine. Mm -hmm. I get it. Why do you want to wear them? Because they're kind of cool. And maybe you want to be a boss? I, just for a minute. All right. I just wanted to pretend for a minute. There you go. You put them on. Thank you. You can be the boss. Hello, everybody. It is Sunday. I can't see a freaking thing. <laughs> That's usually true of most bosses. Well, <laughs> probably. I legit can't see anything. <laughs> legit boss. Anyway, hey guys, it is Sunday. So it is the Sunday Live the Hall show with LV Pink Panther, aka Victoria, aka Vicky, aka my fiance. That's what you are. Mm -hmm. Every time makes me laugh. Anyway, thanks for being here, you guys. Uh, man, it looks like we've got like a bunch of psychics in the room because I saw four upvotes before we even started the show. So and a downvote. So we prematurely are great. Well, I mean, and now we, we have seven upvotes. But, you know, maybe <laughs> I feel like the downvote person is just saying, like, your stick with the glasses was not funny. Probably so true. I'm going to take that as constructive criticism. I won't wear the glasses again. And I will never let her wear those again. <laughs> so uh, thank you. I appreciate the feedback. We will take that mm -hmm. to heart. And but the rest of uh, the upvotes, it looks like people are enjoying us so far. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, guys, welcome to the show. I'm um, really happy to have you all here. Um, we're a little warm right now because we are in the Vegas area. It's like a bazillion degrees. Although today it's like a chilly 98. It's been over the hundreds. I think tomorrow it goes back up. It's practically um, frigid. Yeah, but we've got uh, a bunch of um, highlights for stuff that we've sold this week. We've got some really cool ones, ones that we've shown you in previous hauls. So I always love it when we sell something that we showed before mm -hmm. in a haul because it's cool to be able to see that turnaround. Because, um, you know, we're always saying, like, what we think we're going to sell it for, but maybe we're just full of it. Maybe we're making stuff up. It's true. And half the so, time we haven't really researched stuff before we come up here and say, hey, I think it's going to sell for this. I'm going to price it for this. Yeah. It's based on, like... Kind of a guess, or maybe we'll, do, maybe we'll do like a really quick like look up of comps knowledge, and stuff which like that. may or may not be knowledge. <laughs> may or may not Your be knowledge. Good. My knowledge might not be good. Uh, that way. Anyway, so and then we so have, excuse the frizzy hair too. We just got out of the pool. So yeah, like, we did just get out of the pool. Oh, uh, who was it? I think it was Mary Sullivan. I think is her name. She had asked a question on the previous video about your hair color. She would like to know what you use hmm. because yeah. she would like to add some pink to her blonde hair. I use a uh, Joyco and I use a combination of magenta and hot pink. It's a 50, 50 combo. And uh, Joyco is just uh, it's semi-permanent bright, all, all colors that are bright. like this are semi-permanent dyes. Uh, but if your hair is bleached out underneath like mine is, um, and has been for years, then it will take the best to your hair. You really need to lighten your hair to a certain uh, level before you can do that. But if you're not familiar with doing that yourself, please make sure you see a hair stylist because you really could do severe damage to your hair. I've been doing this a long time, so. I know, super boring, sorry. But she asked, right? you, you just asked me the question. I wasn't volunteering. Jeez. But, to, but I, will, I will say that when she first does it, it's like a really uh, deep, rich, almost like a purple pink. Mm -hmm. um, but so it's been like a few weeks. And then also, we've yeah, been this going has into been five. This is five weeks of color and like nine weeks of regrowth up here yeah. with my, my grays and my dark hair. So in the last couple of weeks, we've been going in the pool, like if not once a day, then twice a day. And she's, yeah. So my, my ends are really bleached out right now. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm, I, it's kind of a bit of a high maintenance hair, but not much more than anything else. Yeah. And I just really don't, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Huh. Dana, I fired Vic as my oh. hairstylist. <gasps> uh, Listen, me. woman with the black <laughs> dye in her hair. <laughs> I am not a hairstylist. I did exactly what any hairstylist would have done, probably not as long uh, as they would have done it. But come on now. You have dyed black hair. It is impossible to lift that crap off your head. Stop. Let's focus on mouth. more positive things, guys. <laughs> like my kitty cat. Um, anyway, okay. So, and then we also have um, our haul is going to be uh, some stuff that we found at the yard sales when we were out on Friday. Mm -hmm. We had, or was it Friday? Yeah, Friday. Yeah. Um, I put up like kind of like a little teaser video yesterday where we talk a little bit about the stuff that we found. And I did a little flat lay on Instagram, which is new. I she just did. Doing that. I've done that like twice and yes. I get a good response to that. I guess yes. that's the thing to do. It's the hip thing to do. Apparently, really getting I'm getting cool. I'm yeah. old, you know, but Instagram is not my, my friend. I'm learning. I'm learning mm -hmm. Instagram. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, the Twitter, I, I stink at the Twitter. See, Tracy Thrips, what the heck? Why do you have a can in a mug? Because she's ridiculous. Because here's the thing, because the mug is amazing, but I'm not like going to pour my soda into the mug because that's gross because then all the bubbles will like, all the carbonation will dissipate. It tastes, I love uh, really cold soda in a can is like the most delicious thing ever. Um, but I also love my mug. So I'm going to put my cup or my can in my cup, can in the cup. Okay. No, Jasmine Marie, you did not miss the hall. We haven't even started yet. We're just like we're just getting started. shooting the crap right now. So yeah, for sure. Um, and then we also this morning, a lot of times, like especially recently, we get up Sunday morning and then uh, I suddenly am like, let's go to Sabers and see if they have anything good. Mm -hmm. um, and let me tell you, this one over here found some crazy, amazing stuff. I feel like I should probably get some sort of commission because it wasn't her idea to go to Sabers today. It was my idea. Okay. And because of my idea, she's going to make like hundreds of dollars because well, she kind of hit the jackpot. I'm, because I'm good. Because remember, we were talking last week about how Savers is doing a summer sale where every Monday everything's 50% off. So we were like trying to decide, like, is it better to go on 50% off day or is it better to go the day before? Because people, a lot of like, especially people who are flippers and thrifters that are resellers are not going to necessarily want to go the day before because they're like, oh, if I go tomorrow, I get 50% off. So let me tell you, we got there. I almost wasn't We sure. were the only people in the store for 20 minutes. I thought they, because they changed their summer hours from 10 a.m. to 9 a.m. on mm -hmm. Sundays. And we got there like a couple minutes after nine. And I'm like, did, did they change is, them is this, I'm like, is this store like not doing this? Because the sign, we originally saw it at a different store. And I'm like, are they not doing it here? Because there's like nobody here. Yeah. Uh, but they were open. So we were like, woo, woo. And right. I found a couple of good things there. But she like majorly major and it really would not have made uh that much of a difference whether i got my we used our 20 percent off coupons whether i used that or my 50 percent off because i didn't buy anything super high yeah dollar we always have so. like 20 percent off coupons like ready to go so hide yeah. stuff kara cooper hide stuff you know no. people do do that i hate that i, I, I hate like that it. that's not, not cool. fair yeah yeah, fair. yeah i'm not i'm not into the hiding thing although occasionally i will find something that somebody hid and the great thing about that is that when you find it it's usually something really good because they were hiding it and i'm like thank you kind yeah of thank sir. you for hiding that for in hiding the children's story. department yeah exactly anyway okay so real quickly guys i do want to address uh without going into any details i do want to talk a little bit about um you know as some of you may know i did put up a video earlier this week that was uh, a very emotional very personal video um and i just want to talk about real quick um about the level of response that i have received and that victoria has received and i want to say for one thing it's been overwhelming mm -hmm. um I have received myself like hundreds and hundreds of private messages, emails, messages through Facebook, through Instagram, of people just showing their support and um, telling me their stories. And I, I just want to say that. And I have as well. And she like, has as well. Like, I don't even know what everything is. Hundreds she's and hundreds of messages, uh, and, comments uh, on, on Facebook, comments on the yeah. video. And, and I, yeah, so just I, dozens of, of private messages and stories. and um support and just people yeah. being kind and and i i really appreciate it there have been several yeah. stories that have uh, brought me to tears several messages that have brought me to tears so I mean, it's I hard to talk about even right now but um it it it's really shown me shown us that like the community we have an amazing community of people who are unbelievably kind and it's been it, Honestly, it's been really overwhelming for me to have so many people come to me and say the things that they've said to me. Um, I feel very loved and blessed that I get to be a part of this community. Um, obviously, it's been a difficult time. Um, it's been a lot of people, and and might, might I just add that you know maybe ten percent of the people that have reached out were people we already knew. A lot of people um, I've never, I didn't know people many, that I knew but many never talked people to. Were, are, were complete strangers and are complete yeah. strangers. So um, I we I really appreciate. It. I know Katie does as well. I do, so. and and so I just wanted to say thank you guys. Um, I've respond. I've tried to respond to as many people as possible. I have not gotten to all of you yet because there just are so many. But I promise, if you haven't heard back from me yet, I will be reaching out to you um, because I do really really appreciate it. Uh, it's. It's like, I, I don't even know how to put into words like how it feels mm -hmm. to have like the support from the community that we have had. But I, I love you guys. I love the reselling community. I love the eBay community. Um, you mean a lot to me. You're really important to me. And I, and I know that that's, Vicky feels the same way. Um, and so I just wanted to say thank you. And uh, But I also wanted to say um, that as far as the video goes, 
I am um, going to be taking it down at some point tomorrow. Um, I do, I feel like it was an important thing for me to do. I feel like it was something that I needed to express and it was time for something to be said about the situation. And so um, I have no regrets about doing it, um, but I do feel like it's running its course and it has served its purpose and the people that needed to see it have seen it. Um, the story is now out there as I felt like it needed to be um, and has reached the people that it needed to reach. And so it will be coming down at some point tomorrow. So um, it's not something that needs to be up in infamy. Right. It is not something that's it was, meant it was, to be ongoing. It was a vehicle for a, a message to be delivered. And I think yeah. the message has been delivered. Absolutely. And um, and basically, you know, I'm not going to be talking about this, uh, at least as far as now goes. I, mean, I, I don't intend to be talking about this anymore on the channel, um, at least not anytime soon. Uh, hopefully not ever again. Um, and so tomorrow's going to be a new day. We're going to start fresh. And we're gonna get back to business as usual, to our same old content. Um, it's all about being positive and having fun with you guys. And hopefully, um, I mean, come on, wear my Prio shirt, guys. Come on, come on. We got a Prio shirt. She's not wearing we got, pants. Hey, my pants are being shown in the screen here. I've got my guacamole and my pico de gato to go with my perito. Okay. Uh, Talking about my pants. That is rude. Anyway, guys, I thank you hot, so so but... much. And listen. It's going to come down tomorrow, but I just want to let you know um, that I appreciate all of you. If you have any questions, um, if you have anything you want to talk to us about, feel free to continue to email us, um, send us messages. We are here to listen. If you have any issues that aren't pertaining to that, but maybe you're, you are going through a tough time right now, if you are feeling lonely, if there are issues going on with you and you need someone to talk to, um, we are happy to be there for you. I'm telling yeah. you, we have an awesome community and 99.9% .9 of the people in this community, as well as just in the world in general, are good people. Like We just want to be there for each other. Um, and so... Again, love you guys. If you're not in the Boss Facebook group, uh, the link to the Boss Facebook group is down below. And we are all about doing awesome stuff and being super positive. We do daily listing challenges. Um, Wednesday is our Boss Up and List Day, which is our virtual listing party that we do every Wednesday. It's super awesome to get people motivated and get you on track because you know listing is like probably the least fun part of what we do um, other than taxes. Uh, well, as far as taxes go, that's, um, that's the, whole, the, whole reason, is, the whole reason Teresa Cox uh, founded the, the Boss Facebook group like, is to Teresa. have a place for resellers to go uh, where we can talk about the business side of things, including taxes. A lot of groups don't like to get into that because they feel like there's a liability around so it. I am so weak in that area. Yeah. Please don't ask me those questions. So if you need somebody to get after you about keeping your books and using different tools to uh, get your business in line, that's the Boss Facebook group is the place to be. Teresa's the one you want and don't want harassing you about um, mm -hmm. doing your taxes and keeping your books. She does. She will harass yeah. you twice a month at least <laughs> about at how least. you're doing. And um, it's June and the most the middle of June and I have not even started my taxes for this this year or last year so yeah, i for sure. fail i get a big old fat f i did file my yeah. extension for last year i filed my extension okay okay i'm sorry <laughs> anyway guys so yeah join the group because it is really cool and it is really a great positive community so let's get started now i want to say guys i got some prizes today we have some prizes today this say, one over here this say, one over she here takes all the credit this one Who over buys here the prizes i have, if you would let me get to it i would give you credit mm -hmm. this one over here this one, my this fiance, one. she uh, thrifted an awesome uh, prize today, and look, it's it's pretty ridiculous. So this is a like a boss mug. Now this thing is huge. I mean, I, it's like take two takes two like, hands to hold it up. Um, my can my my can of soda would get lost in this mug, um, but I am going to be giving this away. We are going to be giving this away. It's new. It has a tag on the bottom. It is. Oh, it is new. But she did thrift it. So I did thrift cool. it. Um, this came from Sabers. So we got like a boss. And then we also have a few t-shirts. <laughs> Allison, I like beer. And then five minutes later, is it prizes? Is it beer? <laughs> well, you know, the beer the beer could be put in the mug, okay? It, you could fit an entire beer in the mug easily. It's true. Uh, all right. And then I also have a few thrifted t-shirts. Yes, and so what, what we'll do, guys, is if you stick around, pay attention. At some point, I will ask a question. And the answer will have been discussed at some point during the video. And whoever answers that question correctly first gets to have their choice of the said prizes. All so right. the next one I have is a thrifted, uh, amazing kitty cats in space t-shirt. This is pretty awesome. This one is a Anybody large. remember like the Muppets? Pigs in yeah. space. It's like so this is cats in space. This is a size large. Now here's the thing. I get it. I'm not going to have sizes that fit everybody. But you know what? You can be crafty. You can make yourself a sweet uh, kitty cat t-shirt pillow. Just saying. Just saying. Cats like in space. It. 
Um, I do have a quick, another boss thing. This is actually uh, an Adidas t-shirt. And this says about that boss life. You got your Adidas trefoil on there. So, and that one is, I think this one's a large, but it's kind of like a, a bigger large. Anyway, and then the last prize option. This is, I think I showed this one last week. Thug for life. That's one. Yeah, Which prize you want? The yeah. mug or eat any I'll probably, of the shirts? I'll probably pick a couple of winners. The first winner will get to choose between all four of them. Um, but yeah, I like to give options. I like to give options. All right, Allison, we're going to make you a beer koozie. We'll make you a beer koozie out of the cat t-shirt. Or, or boss up. <laughs> I'm making notes. She's, she's taking a note on that, Allison, so don't you worry. All right. Okay, so now we're going to go into, uh, we're going to show our sold highlights for the week. And again, we got a few that we just recently um, shared in a haul video or past haul videos. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice to be able to come back and be like, check it out. We totally sold it. Yep. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right now. And we're going to start with uh, Victoria. What do we got? Well, this was part of my huge Barbie haul that I uh, shipped home from Rhode Island. And I realized that the photograph is probably not what most people would do. But basically what happened was, is I took all these things out of the boxes and I was setting them up to see what was, um, what I had. And I realized that I did not want to do this again, put it away and put it somewhere else to take a better photo of it. So, and clearly it didn't matter. It sold anyway, but, um, this sold for a hundred dollars, uh, less than 24 hours up. Uh, it sold exactly for what I thought it was going to sell for. And it cost me $9 to ship. So there you go. Awesome. Uh, it's vintage 80s Barbies. I actually bought a huge Barbie collection from my cousin back home when we were visiting Rhode Island. And I paid $200 to ship it home. It was 66 pounds of Barbie doll stuff. And this was just one of the first few things that I had listed. I love all the little, the little tiny shopping uh, I'm telling you, uh, if my cousin Diane happens to be watching this, I don't know that she ever even played with anything. It was her and her it's sister. Crazy. They played with everything, but it was so complete. It's ridiculous. I lost eight or, sh or, or buried half of what I ever had when I had little toys when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything is so complete and so nicely not played with. I don't even understand it, but it's great. So uh, I do need to shout out Jamie Perez because um, apparently Jamie loves us and would like a shout out. So all right. shout out to you, Jamie. Thanks for joining mm -hmm. the show. Um, oh, Christiane wants all of the prizes. <laughs> well, Christiane, you're going to have to win every time then. So you better be paying get attention. Your, you get, better be get paying ready. attention. Start We're taking be... notes. <laughs> exactly. It's like a college course. All right. Did you already say how much you sold it for? Yeah, I sold it for, I took an offer for $100, which is exactly where I thought it was going to go uh, be. I always price things a little bit high, especially at first. And I figured I was going to get between $100 and 125 bucks for it, knowing when I put things on sale and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it sold for $100. Nice. And it, it cost me about 8 bucks to ship it. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is mine. Now, some of you guys may remember, I got this shirt at the Buffalo Exchange. Um, actually, Victoria is the one that found it for me. So I'm going to give her credit before she gets uh, abusive and angry at me. For <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm so <laughs> abusive. Anyway, so this uh, this is a vintage 90s Fox Racing um, like uh, BMX jersey. And I think I paid, I don't remember exactly. It's in a previous haul. I think I paid like $15 or $17, maybe $11. I don't remember exactly. It's pretty faded, as you can see. Um, and it's got, it actually has, uh, some holes in it somewhere. Well, let me see, uh, where is it? Yeah. It's got holes in the sleeve. It's pretty beat up. Um, but it is from 1995 and I actually sold this for $107 and 99 cents. Uh, so I was super excited when I got that sale done. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was hoping to get it for a big amount, but I wasn't entirely sure with how faded and beat up it was, but sometimes the beat up stuff, it's actually more of a draw than having it look like it's uh, dead stock. So I'm super stoked about it. All right. So next one for you. Uh, this one I had for a couple of months, maybe three months or so. Um, this is a, it's more about the brand than what you're seeing there. Catrion is, is just a, it's a, it's a famous yacht actually that has changed hands a few times. And the only reason I know that is because I had to research what it was. But it was this uh, vest was made by a company called Musto, and Musto is a high-end um, sailing and boating uh, clothing company. So I knew when I grabbed that's a blurry picture. Sorry, um, I knew when I grabbed it that it was going to be worth a lot. It was new with tags, but it had been made specifically for the crew of that um, that ship. So 
Uh, I sold it for most of their stuff sells for hundreds, but it was a size small. It was specifically embroidered for something else. So in any case, I sold this for $101 when it was on sale and it uh, shipped to Australia and they paid um, $25, I think, for shipping, whatever it was. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think I paid $7 for it or so when I bought it. Awesome. I do want to say I appreciate that you take the time to apologize to us when you have blurry pictures because I know I'm offended and I'm pretty sure there's other <laughs> people that are offended. So yeah, it's like, you know, but you make it, you, you set things right. So I appreciate you take, hey, you take listen, responsibility for your errors. My pictures are not perfect. They're never going to be perfect. Uh, Katie's pictures are pretty <laughs> darn close to perfect, but mine are not. So in any case, I like taking pictures sometimes. Uh, it's my least favorite part of, of selling. I prefer listing and buying and researching and all that kind of stuff. So I do have my lovely assistant, Dana, who uh, works for me usually one day a week, about four hours taking photos. So whatever she doesn't photograph, I photograph. And uh, four hours is not nearly enough to get through all my crap in one week. Yeah. But it's a big help. Absolutely. Okay. Next one I have is this awesome, I don't know, is it is pronounced Acer? Is that the mm -hmm. brand? Acer Aspire. This is a 90s t-shirt. Um, and this is just, uh, you know, I always try, anytime I find something that's got kind of like anything technology or like nerdy or something like this that's like from the 90s or even better if it was from the 80s that'd be awesome like apple stuff especially i think um i think allison from big drift Thrift, i think she recently like sold some some apple type stuff anyway yeah. i always pick up i saw some on instagram but i always pick up stuff like this um because this is from the 90s uh and i think i've had it up for i don't know maybe i don't even think it's been a month honestly um, but I sold this for $47.99, um, but I actually sold it, uh, I don't remember what country I sold it to, but it went overseas. So they paid $23.50 to have it shipped. So I got a total of $71.49. It did cost me about $20 to ship it. Um, but seriously, I mean, this is a used vintage t-shirt, guys. So anytime you see stuff like this, any kind of like computer type stuff. Yeah, any geek techie any stuff. Any kind of geek techie stuff, particularly when it is vintage. And not always vintage, because I remember I showed you guys that Xbox jacket I sold with, like last mm -hmm. week or the week before. Um, those do well as well. But vintage, faux show. Uh, and to answer um, this question, Gretchen's question, do you use a camera or a phone for taking pics? Uh, both. So when my assistant Dana is taking pictures for me, she will use uh, a camera, which is a relatively new camera. It's a couple years old um, and it has the square one-to-one -one setting and it's a, it's a really nice camera. And I use my phone when I take mine. So it's a combination of the two. She uses my camera so that she's not using my phone. I don't want her to use her phone and have to try to upload it to my computer. It's just a little bit more uh, complicated. So that's the answer. Yeah, I take all of my pictures with my phone. Um, I just have a, what do I have? A Samsung Galaxy S7, S7. I think. You have an S7. I have yeah. an S9. And I use the, I just use the, the native app, the app, the, the camera app that comes on the phone. You're able to go like the regular pictures you would take, you do with an auto setting, but you can switch over to the pro setting. And then that way you can change things. Um, like as far as the lighting and stuff like that goes, and it makes a huge difference. Like getting your kind of camera dialed into exactly how you want it is the best. I don't do any uh, I don't do any editing of my pictures. Um, everything is taken as is. I have, like she said, the one-to-one -one ratio, the square photos. I have it set up to take pictures like that. So I never have to edit anything. It saves tons of time and I'm pretty happy with my It pictures. sucks when you're trying to take a selfie and you've got like more than three people in the photo because my phone is always set on the square no, no, photo. That's true. That's true. But, uh, but, but it yeah, works it for Instagram too because Instagram, yeah. like, you know, it's, the square picture is what works best for Instagram. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. go ahead. Uh, so this was something I picked up. This was part of my Rhode Island haul. I picked these up. I got a whole bunch of shoes. Oh yeah. Go look at that, uh, that haul from that time. She got so, so much shoes. crap. I mean, really, we sent home so much stuff. I mean, 3000 miles, we had to take carry it home, ship it home, all kinds of stuff. We should probably shouldn't have sourced nearly as much as we did on another coast, but Hey, it's already, I don't know. Look at that. You've already gotten these shoes sold, I sold, sold the things. Barbie yeah. stuff. I mean, come on. So this, uh, I paid about $7 for these at Savers and they sold for one Oh one thirty six. I got a couple low ball offers. I ignored the offers and, uh, and they're not brand new. They're, you know, pretty clear that there's a little bit of wear on them. Not much at all. Actually, they were in very, very good condition. Uh, but you can see the silver's a little scratched and uh, just normal wear and tear. So they sold for a hundred dollars. Uh, they fit in a padded flat rate mailer. I wrapped them up in tissue so they didn't stick. And um, there you go. Nice. So it was a good return. Uh, the question, Jamie, do you offer free returns even on your expensive or heavy items? On my expensive, personally, uh, I'll answer first and then Katie can answer. 
On my expensive items, yes, I do. On my very heavy items, no, I do not. Um, if it's weighs more than five pounds, I do not. Um, I do paid returns on uh, a certain number of items. And then if there, obviously if there's something wrong, I'm going to obviously take a return or offer a refund no matter what. But if it's just a buyer's remorse, then they can pay to return it. Yeah, because I do a lot of hard goods and a lot of, uh, not a lot of my stuff, but a significant portion of my stuff is going to be fairly heavy and mm -hmm. breakable. And I don't do any hard goods. All of my stuff is clothing. So, I mean, there's some stuff that's a little bit, more, can be a little bit more expensive to ship like shoes and stuff like that. Um, but I just do free returns on everything. I don't worry about it. And, um, you know, we talked a little bit about returns last week. Next week on this show, we will be talking about free returns again. What we're going to do is both Victoria and I have been doing free returns for about three months now. So we're actually going to do a little work and calculate um, like we're going to let you guys know, like what our increase in returns have been as a result of doing free returns. But we're also going to talk about the actual cost to us, like how much it's actually cost us, um, in, uh, return shipping, as well as, um, how our sales have changed in that time. Um, and, and we're going to so, kind of do like a cost benefit analysis. Yeah. Just yeah. Let you, and let you on our own personal accounts over a 90 day period, just right. so you can see how it worked for us. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Cause that's really what it's all about. It's like, you want to experiment, you want to figure out, is it going to work for you or not? So we'll, we'll be talking about some more next week. Um, so if you're interested in that, come back. You have not missed the showstopper items. These are just our <laughs> solds from last week. Showstoppers yeah. will be toward, uh, when we start doing the haul yep. in a few moments. Yep. It's all right. That's flipping particles. All right. So, uh, my next sold is this Billy Reed trench coat. Um, now this I got at, uh, Burlington. Um, I haven't been doing any retail arbitrage lately, but a few months, yeah, basically I kind of do it in waves. Like every few months I'll suddenly decide I want to go do retail arbitrage. And so, um, I went to one of the Burlington's and I found this, these jackets and I actually got three of them. So I got a couple left. Um, but they're just like this nice, uh, long coat. And these are actually like, sometimes the prices you see at Burlington on the price tag, you're like, okay, that's not a $695 jacket. And I doubt it ever sold for that much. Clearly this one was on clearance at the original store. Um, but I'll look up the comps really quick and see if it, it's worth getting. And this particular one, um, Billy Reed, I saw that it, not this exact jacket, but a lot of other Billy Reed stuff sells for in the hundreds. And so I took a chance and I bought three of them for $45 each. And, uh, this was the first one I've sold. So I have had, they've been sitting around for a little while, but I sold this one. Um, actually, I think I took an offer for this one and I sold it for $240. You actually haven't had it that long. You, you start, you listed it in March. Oh, okay. So I listed the beginning of March. So that's so March, like, April. Just over two months. That's really not that long for a March, month. April, May. We're in June. Oh, three months. <laughs> just over three months. I Time lost, flies. I lost a month. Anyway, so I sold this for $240. So I already paid for all three that I bought and I still have two more to sell. Um, and so they might have, they might take a little more time. I did, I did have one listed on Grail. Um, grail, grail. Anyway, and uh, I got an offer for it, and I accepted. The guy never paid, so um, I did not sell that one yet. We'll see if that, mm. anything ever happens. Mm. But, um, but yeah, next one. And this is uh, speaking of retail arbitrage. And my, we don't even plan or practice these segments. I know, That's right? So weird. And I, I wasn't even thinking about it when I put them next to each other either. Uh, so anyway, uh, speaking of retail arbitrage, I don't know if anybody remembers when this was the big thing on Facebook about two months ago, this was like all over the place, this huge life-size unicorn thing. If you go to like that third picture just to, oh yeah, um, it was all over Facebook. It was like a trending thing. So I happened to see it first thing in the morning laying in bed, scrolling through Facebook and went, huh, I wonder how much these things cost. I was looking at one. I wanted to pick one up for my niece and I went to see that they were sold out everywhere. So on Amazon and other sites, they were selling for a couple hundred dollars. And I went, hmm, let me see if they have any local. I'm going to go and scoop these up and wait for summertime. So I did. I went to four local targets and bought every single one they had. I paid $50 a piece and I have sold a few of them now at between $185 and $195. Yeah. And you'll sell the rest. And I will sell the rest. I have just a few left. Um, and really there are people selling them for less, but this particular company is not making them. They sold them in a limited quantity to certain stores. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty popular company, Big Mouth Toys. And so they're kind of hard to find. And there are a few people selling for less, but not, I'll wait, I'll wait them out. I don't yep. care. Uh, Crazy Wonderful O Family said that they're still at the point where they can't get themselves to pay up for things, still at the bin stage. And that is totally understandable. I started selling, um, I had my first sale on eBay in December of 2015. I didn't start even like venturing into clothing until a few months after that. 
Um, and then I dove uh, head first, but um, let me tell you, I didn't know anything about clothing. I didn't know anything about men's clothing, which is all I sell now. Um, but I started basically at the bins and probably that first year, that was the only place that I would source that. I would just go to the bins because I didn't know anything. And I, in 99 cents a pound, I felt like was a cheap tuition um, to learn what sells and what doesn't sell. And then I relatively quickly kind of started to learn more and more. And then when you get to the point where you have a really good grasp on how much stuff is worth and what you can sell it for, mm -hmm. you start to get, uh, you know, I will, I will encourage you to um, maybe like a little bit here and there, kind of push yourself to uh, you know pay up for certain things if you feel like you know what it might be worth. And plus, we live in the day and age when we have um, our phones that we can look anything up on. I mean, a lot of times I'll buy stuff like that Billy Reed coat. It's like I don't, I've never, I'd never even heard of that brand, right. but because I had my phone there and I could look up the comps, I knew um, okay, I could take a chance and I could spend a little more money. But I am at the point now where I'm able to do that. But I totally understand when I could not do that and I had to stick to the 99 cent thing. Um, but that's the thing, you know, work yourself, work, work, work up to work that, up. you know, build up your average sale price. You can slowly do that because I definitely went through that process myself. And when I was first doing it, I remember I had finally gotten to where I was making a full-time income in the fall of 2016. And I was at about a $20 average sale price. The next month I went to 25, the next month to 30, then to 35. And now I'm kind of, I'm kind of hanging out between 50 and 60, but it took some time and I really had to learn a lot along the way. All right. So uh, let's go to my last thing, guys. Seriously, guys, seriously. I don't know if you remember this. Last week. I showed this last week. This is a sweatshirt. It is a vintage Adidas Olympic sweatshirt that I bought last week. I, I entered into an auction. The auction only had a couple of pictures. I knew it was kind of in bad shape, but I didn't realize how bad of shape it was because I wasn't really paying attention. I put in like a top bid of, a, I think I said I would go up to $100 because it's in really good shape. These can sell for like over $250, if not more. And I ended up winning and between, I think I, I, I think I, my bid ended up being $63 plus shipping. So I spent about $76 on this sweatshirt. And man, Vicky was giving me such a hard time because it got here and it was so terrible. It was like, it has some stains on it. The threading was loose on it. Uh, it was covered. It had pilling all over it. Was it was gross. It was just, yeah, it was, it, was it didn't gross. feel like it'd been washed. I was trying to tell her to like return it and the guy had no returns. I'm like, I don't care. That is way. Yeah. But here's the thing. The I went back and I looked at the listing and I'm reading it and I, I looked at the condition listing again. I looked closer at the pictures that were included. And even though I didn't realize how sketchy. bad it was, no, even though, listen guys, I didn't realize how bad it was, but I didn't feel like looking at what he had put in his listing that I really had a leg to stand on to say it wasn't as described. And I wasn't going to force a return because I just didn't feel like it would be the right thing to do. So I decided to keep it. I washed it a couple of times. I used my little fabric shaver and got all the pilling off of it. Um, and let's see. I mean, as you can see, it's like, it's got, yes, the photo did have the guy's feet in the pit. <laughs> it did. You it was did. Bad. You remember Christiane? It was bad. Yeah. yeah, it was right. yeah, yeah. And so it's, see, it's got like bleach stains. It's all faded. You can see the threading is coming. I did trim up the threading, but it's still, you can see where, how the threading is loose on it. You made it look um, way better. We washed it like three times. Yeah, I watched it. I watched it a few times, but it's still, you can see it in my description. I said, you know, it's, I, I pointed out all the flaws. And I still sold it. I think I sold it within one day for $180. So I was worried I was barely going to be able to make my money back, but I went from $76 to 180. And let me tell you, I'm totally cool with that. So yeah. uh, I was pretty excited. I think I was yelling at you from upstairs <laughs> you to tell you that I had gotten it. So I had sold it for that much. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's another case where it's like, I definitely paid up for that. Now I thought I was going to be full of regret because of the condition that came in, but luckily uh, it ended up being a happy story. Um, it's a happy, a happy story. story. Unless like the guy that I sold it to gets it and he's like, I got to return this because it I don't know. Rough, you're pretty detailed. Yeah. I feel like I, I explained exactly what the deal was. So yeah. anyway. All right. Now so those are our highlights of our sales for the week. Obviously we don't always uh, show you everything that we sell yeah. and we don't show you. Uh, we try to sell the real, show you the really good things yeah. either we've talked about before or they're high return. But um, both of our stores are linked in the description. You so can look at our sold You can anytime. go look at our solds anytime and you can see what we've sold. And let me tell you, like I had some great sales this week. Like mm -hmm. my numbers for this week are actually um, pretty good. But I will tell you, this is like really weird. This has never happened to me. I literally, like we, we shipped our stuff on Friday late because we had gone out and we've been to the yard sales and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the stuff normally would have been part of my weekend sales. I actually did ship out. But then I had, yesterday I didn't have a single sale. Yeah, I'm and sorry. I had didn't I did sell, okay. and I haven't sold anything since I shipped everything like later in the day on Friday. 
So I literally, it's Sunday. I literally have one item for $25 to go out. I have nine and I shipped my stuff on Friday late yeah. too. So I have nine things, but I have about nine things for around 400 or yeah. so. So I'm, I, so I, I know, sold yet today. I know also I've had some offers and stuff, some back and forth offers. Slow I know that like I'll sell some more stuff by the end of the day. And I usually have like a, a jump in because of my sale ends like halfway through the day tomorrow. So I will get like a, a, probably like a rush of sales at the end, but I'm just telling you, like we can show you all day. Like, look at this thing. I sold for a hundred dollars. Look at this thing. I sold for 150. And at the end of the day, it's like yesterday, it's very unusual for me to have a day of zero sales. Like that almost never happens because uh, how active I am in my store, the number of items I have. Um, I think it's happened like twice in like the last 12 months, if not, if even that. Um, but it happens. Derek it Yamamoto happens to everybody. In the house. It's Derek Yamamoto. He was here, which means he just came in to yell that at us. and then He he's like gonna... zoomed in because <laughs> he's at work right now and probably shouldn't be watching this. But, you know. You know, he's not even a reseller. That's what you call a friend right there. Yep. There you go. Uh, anyway, okay, so you want to start? I guess we'll start. We'll start our hauls. So we are going to. Um, what time do you end your day in your store? Are you talking about like sales or just like working? Or I think maybe they're asking if do we have a like neither one of us have actually a real store. So our stores are just our online. We don't have a brick and mortar store. Yeah, we have our. Do two, we ever uh, stop working? No, not really. Mm -mm. Here's the thing, though. This is what's awesome about working for yourself is that yes. We usually work a lot of times we work, maybe we end up working like 10 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. Like we would do work a lot, probably three or four days a week. We will work about a good 10 hours a day. And then weekends, uh, we still work on the weekends. We work seven but it days. Might just we really like do work seven hours, days. Yeah. Like but I would bet we probably work 60, 70 hours a week each at least. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the thing. It's like, even on a 10 hour day, it's like, we'll get up in the morning and we might go swimming in the pool first thing. We'll hang out and drink our coffee and do whatever, and then we'll finally get to work, and then it'll so hit work till seven or eight o'clock. Well, sometimes. and then it'll hit three o'clock, and we'll be hot. We'll be like, let's go jump in the pool again, and or let's go do this, or let's go meet up with somebody for lunch or whatever. And it's like we'll do that, and then we come back, and then we work until eight o'clock or whatever. So it's like, yeah, we work a lot. But so like, if we combined our stores, and you, if we were a couple working together and had one store, our revenue would be really good. Really, really good. We it's individually, good, it's, good it's very good individually, but we would be kind of ridiculous if it were just the two of us, considering we don't have uh, any full time helpers. But we do work a lot, but we love what we do. So, okay, so the clarification is on eBay. Do, what time of day do you end your sales? Are you talking about for like handling time? Because uh, mine just goes for the 24 hour period. I, I yeah. do next day handling. So I think I don't we were do... talking about sales. You said your sales end on, on Monday. You oh, I'm talking about sale. like a sale. Like I have a 50% off sale going right now. So that's ending. Tomorrow. I say he, I don't know if that's a he, I'm sorry. Yeah, so thrifty, it... thrifty rabbit, boink, boink, boink. It could be a girl. I don't know. Uh, actually, um, I just, I tend to run my sales Wednesday to Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I restart them when I get up in the morning. They end sometime around yeah. midnight on Wednesday. Yeah, I will. I will say um, if you are talking about like handling time, people who do same day shipping, they set a time where they'll say two o'clock is the end of day. Like you have to get your order in by two o'clock and then they'll ship that same day. And if they, if you order something at three, it's not going to ship till the next day. Right. So right. I don't, so I don't go I that. Like, I don't go that far. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I just do a uh, 24 hour handling time. Yeah. Maybe. I do next day. And just, I do guaranteed ship. We're in the guarantee. Both of us are yeah. in the guaranteed shipping program. Um, just because I don't ever want to be, I don't ever want to be locked in that much to like making sure I get something shipped out. And I feel like next day is enough. Yeah. And the thing is, it's like, if I, if I do my shipping at 10, if you ordered before 10, like I'll ship your stuff out that same day. I'm not going to wait till the next day to do it. So, And do you push your big ticket items on Instagram? I noticed some people do that and wonder how successful that is. I've got to be honest. I belong to a fantastic group that Lorna runs that is all about uh, social media and social media sharing and sharing one another's items. And it's a very small private group. So really everyone involved um, does a lot of work except me. I absolutely suck. I apologize publicly all the time. I really shouldn't even be in the group because I really suck at it so badly, but I love the people in the group. Um, I get to it probably once every other week and uh, doing the social media sharing. It is something that has absolutely shown to increase my sales. I know when I set, when I share and share other people's things, um, I have sold things that I've shared all the time. Um, I am really terrible about carving out time in my day to do it and I every time I vow to do it I, I suck at it and I fail so yeah. I can I can say that you probably would do very well if you did do that uh, yeah um, I, I am the absolute worst 
at keeping stuff updated on my social media. And I feel like we just work. So, I'm, both of us work so hard. I mean, it's, it's bad. Like, I, I need to find a better balance for that because I do know, especially with like the stuff I sell, like the men's streetwear does so really Lorna, well. I am terrible. I know. Yeah. I it agree. Does, it does really it. well on Instagram. Listen, I used to be in Lorna's group and I was such a slacker with it that I was like, listen, Lorna, I'm going to take myself out of the group because I really want to make sure because she keeps a, it's a very limited private group and she keeps a, she keeps a handle on how many people she allows in the group. And I wasn't participating enough. And so I felt like I was taking a space that could be better used by somebody else. Because reality is I knew I was never going to like do it enough to um, be a good member. <gasps> assignments and uh, homework. I would do that. I would be much better if you gave me assignments and that's homework. That's true. Because I was always the teacher's pet. So, you she know, likes to I cross probably stuff do well. Off Look, here's, 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 my, here my, here's my list that she gave me that I have to cross I off. give her to-do lists, honey-do <laughs> lists, because she is the world, world's I'm a procrastinator, worst procrastinator. So it does help. Uh, mm -hmm. anyway, okay. And do either of us do Poshmark? The answer is no, no, no. And I know that that's a new way, uh, a new wave. And a lot of the newer, uh, bigger sellers are doing that. And a lot of the newer sellers are doing yeah. it. So again, just not enough time. To be honest, if I, if I was going to put more time into other platforms, I would put more time into Etsy because with my, with the stuff I do, like vintage, vintage men's clothes, mm -hmm. it goes really well on there. I, I posted stuff. I listed stuff on there like over a year ago and I still have sales from it. Me too. And so, um, I, a year and a half ago. Yeah, I so if I cross posted all of my vintage stuff onto Etsy, I probably would be making so much more money right now. It's really terrible. I have no excuse. She really um, needs to hire an assistant. I do have an assistant. Someone asked if we could hire somebody. I do have an assistant. Yeah. I did cut her hours from like 25 to like four a week. Yeah. Um, I probably need to talk to Dana and like we, cry, we need cry to and both, beg her we need to, to maybe both help give me with Etsy. Dana more work. <laughs> if she wants to do it. But anyway, so I would probably uh, focus on Etsy and then also on Instagram. Cause like I was just saying, Instagram has a, has a really, um, has a really good community of people who uh, are into men's streetwear. Um, and so I think that that's especially uh, a kind of a category that does really, really well mm -hmm. on Instagram. So I know I'm doing really bad. I did a lot of work like a year ago to build up my Instagram, my store Instagram, not my thrifter one. Um, and I got myself over a thousand followers and then I went and I stopped doing it. So I'm yeah terrible. I know we're both <laughs> we're horrible. We're both I'm horrible. horrible. Uh, okay. A couple more questions and we'll get into our thrift stuff. Um, if we we could answer all questions all day long. So, what, what well, do James wants to know if it's harder to find streetwear here in Vegas. Um, yes and no. I find some really really cool things here in Vegas. I will say one thing I really loved. Any of you who are over on the West Coast in Oregon, like when I was thrifting in Salem, there like not Portland. Um, I stayed in the Salem area, and what I found was uh, there were still people who thrifted there to resell, but I didn't find that there were was a lot of competition when it came to um, thrifting the kind of stuff that I was buying to resell. And here's where the whole thing about uh, paying up for stuff is important. I think a lot of the stuff that I was buying, people weren't willing to spend the money um, to buy it because it would get, they would think it was priced too expensive. Like you hear people complaining about Goodwill and how the prices are too high. Uh, and I do think that's true sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times I think it's priced appropriately. It's just people don't like the idea of spending $20 on a jacket, but if I can sell it for hundred, I will. So to a certain degree, I found a lot of st great stuff there. Here, I found going to yard sales uh, with with Vicky. I've been finding some really good stuff here. It's like I'm working more and building some partnerships and relationships with people that can help me to source things more regularly. Um, I do find I find a lot of awesome stuff at uh, at like the Buffalo Exchange. Um, I find you know obviously I have to pay more for it, but I find really really good items there. Um, so I don't know. It just it's different. That's all I can say is it's different. But there's definitely tons of stuff for me to source here and. Uh, yes, we do have a Facebook group. It actually is Ter uh, Teresa Cox's Facebook group, but Katie and I are both admins in that group. The link is at the bottom. It's called the boss group. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a really good, really good group. Uh, it's growing and yeah. it's basically, it, yes, it is about thrifting, but it also started, um, mostly about business and how to handle the business side of your, of your business. Yeah. So, and, um, Another question was, do either of us have kids? And if we do, how do we balance your time with family and no business? No balancing of time. We have fur babies and that's it. Um, I do have a daughter. I shouldn't say that's it. I do. My daughter's 25 though, and she lives on her own and she doesn't live here anymore. So she's mm -hmm. all grown up. Uh, so we don't have, we don't have kids that we need to worry about. Yeah. I do realize that if you have a, a child and, or another job or small children or other household responsibilities, yeah. you absolutely are not going to be able to commit to uh, as many hours a day. Yeah to your work online as we do we just yeah. we have each other and um we both do the same thing and we both appreciate it uh, well and that's yes. and that's the big and that's um, a big part of it is that because we both do the same thing even though we have separate stores 
Um, we are around each other all the time. So for some of you, you might have a spouse that like has a different job or whatever, and I'm sure it causes some friction sometimes if you're working too many hours. For us, it's like we're together all the time. So even though we're doing our thing and we're working, it's like we get to go sourcing together if we want to. Like we spent the day together on Friday doing yard sales. Plus yeah. we understand because we both do the same kind of work, we understand everything that's going on. And so it's like, we get to have fun together. So do we balance very well with our work? Probably not, but because we're doing it together, it's like, we kind of don't care and it works yeah. okay for us. So, and Chris, last question that we've got to get into this stuff. So, uh, Christian, do you just spell it Vicky, Vicky or Vicky? It's the second one. It's V I K K I kind of like Nikki six from Motley Crue. I'm kind of a hair band rocker girl. <laughs> so when I was about nine, I changed the spelling of my name in the early eighties. Uh, and um, because I was a, already a rocker fan. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah. And then, and then when she became an adult and got like her, her first like big girl job, she changed her, she went to girl I started I, using Victoria. She was like, my name is Victoria again. because I demand respect because I am a woman. Because I was a blonde, <laughs> bubbly cheerleader, literally. And I went into the business world in my yeah. uh, very early twenties. So she had to wear a business man's suits. business world wearing suits and nobody took me seriously. She's wearing her business suits with her shoulder pads. and her. Name I didn't have shoulder pads. It was the nineties. <laughs> there were no shoulder pads. How old do you think I am? Jeez. Her name is Victoria guys. Give her some respect. <laughs> all right. So anyway, uh, all right into our thrifts we will try to get back and answer a few questions if we can um yeah. I, I apologize it just goes so fast so um anyway i'll start i guess gonna uh, start. i'm well, gonna start okay gonna start. no i was gonna say do okay just go ahead just go, go ahead yeah or do you want to give something away first no no no. i was gonna well we could okay. give something away yeah let's give something away okay okay i have a question let's see who was paying attention whoever answers this first hmm. when we were in new england vicky bought a ton of barbie stuff what item from that Barbie haul did she sell this week? Who was Ooh. paying attention? What did Vicky sell this week? You could win a giant mm -hmm. mug right here or your choice of t-shirts. So, okay, Mary Silva's really excited about the cat t-shirts. So what did, oh, she, you might have missed the beginning part. Nope, Jamie, you're wrong. Nope, wasn't, nope, wasn't, wasn't the house. house, wasn't a car. What did she sell, guys? No. Oh, you guys. Ooh, Ooh you're getting close. You're getting close. No, no come no, on. No. 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 Ooh, you're getting so close. The beauty shop set. That's real close. It's it's beginning anew. It's not the beauty shop set, but come on. Ooh, is that it? Dream store. Dream store. Dream store. Michelle El er Eric. Eric. Michelle Eric. It Michelle was the dream store. Eric. Okay, Michelle, what do you want? Do you want the giant boss mug that I'm pretty sure you might be able to get close to fitting a whole bottle of wine in? I don't know. It's pretty large. Uh, Michelle Eric, which one do you want to win? Or do you want Thug Life Kitty, who's real tough? Or do you want the Adidas Boss t-shirt? Has she said anything? Nope. Has Michelle said anything? Or Barbie Billy Reed jacket. Kitties, kitty cats in space, cats in space. Anyway, Michelle, tell us what you want. We'll do another private. We'll do one more before we finish the show. Send a, a private uh, message or or say it right there. And we'll oh, try she to wants the mug. It. Michelle gets the mug. Okay, Michelle. Right, Michelle, send, send us a some, PM. Send a message. I don't think you can do that through YouTube. But um, find me on, well, my email is in the description or you can find me on Facebook and just message me directly and I will send it out to you. Derek Yamamoto says, thug for life. Big fish in the house. Okay, so go ahead. All right. So uh, this is a couple things that I picked up today at um, Savers. We just had our 20% off coupon. I haven't quite looked these up yet, but these are like vintage from the 80s. These are like the I paid $2. They're, so cool. they're these little combination bike locks that you use a little fake credit card to open and they're new in package. I think they are so fun. They're probably um, super secure too, you guys. So if you got a, right? if you got a carbon guardians, road bike, guardians, they'll keep your stuff. If you have safe. a carbon road bike, you probably are going to want one of these too. Uh, right? I safe. think. Oh, is that to Derek Yamamoto? <laughs> Derek, I think you need one of these. Yeah. Anyway, just, one was pink and one is uh, black, and um, I paid about two bucks for them. I saw one is for sale for fifty dollars or best offer, but there are no solds. I've got to do a little bit more research to see what they're worth, but they're certainly worth more than two dollars each. So nice. I thought those are cute. Um, this is another thing I picked up. I picked up a Maleficent, uh, Disney store, Maleficent new in the box. Uh, I did pay up a little bit for this one. I paid $12 for it and I'm going to sell it for 40 to 50. Most of them are selling in the 30 to $40 range. I'm okay pricing it a little high because I do sell international. I take free returns, all that kind of stuff. And fourth quarter is going to come faster than you guys think. And people exactly. want to buy, 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 buy. Exactly. Uh, I almost like went into an NSYNC song there. 
the baby pop pop pop. Yeah, pretty much like that. Uh, Laura says that she needs the pink one for her bike. Bye. That'll be fifty dollars, Laura. Yeah, James. Well, Laura, that's going to be fifty dollars. Okay. <laughs> or you can pay for it in um, in mod work. I don't know. All right, go ahead. Uh, okay, I'll do two things here, and then okay. So these I picked up at a garage sale yesterday. Just a, a Bolo brand. This is from the garage sale, the very first one that we went to, where we found crazy amounts of tons of tons of, tons of I stuff. Found yeah, my showstopper. My showstopper is not from there, but I did have some good stuff from there. Yeah. So you may have seen these on, um, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, but um, I'm not a huge Instagram poster. So, I mean, don't go crazy. Anyway, so this is a, just a Bolo brand is a uh, rock revival. Um, so I picked up a pair of shorts, so a little cutoff shorts. They're supposed to be shorts. I paid um, on average for everything I picked up at that garage sale, about $3 each item. These are a good bigger size, which are harder to find. So I'm going to sell these for about $69.95. Now, Rock Revival, that's like one of those brands that used to be super hot, and it still does Rock well. Revival is still hot. Affliction sucks, doesn't sell well yeah. anymore. Miss Me sucks, doesn't sell well anymore. I mean, if you get it for a buck or two, sure, you can sell them for $30 or so. But I will say, Rock Revival, Rock Revival the prices are still good. You know, even like True Religion prices are down. This whole rocker look with the bling on the ass, sorry, on the butt, are not is not quite as cool as it used to be it's a little bit um a little depending bit. on where you where you live in the country it's yeah. kind of not that cool anymore um unless you live here because all the girls here still wear this stuff except me but um yeah so it still sells really well so Very i picked up a cool. pair of shorts and a pair of jeans and the this, jeans. Uh, this sale we went to they had this giant rack that was just jam-packed with jeans we didn't even have time to go through all of them uh beginning yeah. anew i want to say real quick Begin beginning anew says that um apparently we've inspired her hubby to list every day um and their stores up over 900 percent last year that, that is, is awesome, awesome. That's that is the best awesome. testimonial i've heard yet That's and i'm awesome. telling you you guys if you have a problem if you have a hard time motivating yourself to list regularly i'm telling you a boss facebook group link is down below we're all about listing and getting on top of the listing, but that is so, that is a, very, that's that's a super great, awesome. Yeah. I wish I was 900% over last year. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So yeah, thrifty Christie, I'm still sitting on some miss me jeans. Yep. Me too, honey. I've got about two or three pair. I mean, I'm not, I'm not much into them, but yeah, they just, the brand is just yeah. buckle. Miss me. Blech, brands not a change. Anymore. Brands change. You know, you have to stay, stay with the fashions. All right. So going to that, that first sale that we went to, um, I went straight to, I mean, there were so many different clothing racks. That's how she ended up getting that jacket that I would have wanted to get. Cause there were so many racks that I had. All to, it was, was clothing. It was a lot of clothes. Not so I went straight to this t-shirt one and I'm like, okay, I'm hoping that there's going to be some cool vintage t-shirts because that's my jam. And so I go look at the t-shirts and I found like a bunch of different stuff. So I'll show you. Uh, but like I said, the t-shirt is my showstopper. Uh, but I have a few other t-shirts that I got some weird ones. Some of them I have to like do some, uh, research on, uh, this one, I got a few wrestling ones. They're not quite vintage. These ones I think are all from 2002, but I did want to show, um, this one's Eddie Guerrero. I'm assuming he's some sort of, um, uh, some sort of wrestler. Actually, this is from 2005. Uh, but the thing about this particular t-shirt is wrestling stuff. Apparently he's dead. Wrestling stuff sells pretty well. Um, but you should always like kind of keep an eye out for stuff like this where it's like uh, like a it's like a memorial it's like to to um to like memorialize somebody who has passed away um because a lot of times they will actually sell for a decent price um this one i did actually look this one up and i've seen that it has sold before for around 50 dollars oh, nice. um, so hopefully yeah. I'll, I'll be able to do that. i paid 24 dollars and i probably got like eight or nine t-shirts so not too bad um, but yeah, so that was one of them that I got. And then I just got like a few other wrestling ones from around 2002. I got some really weird stuff. I need to research this. I'm guessing this might be like some sort of weird bootleg, in which case I won't be able to sell it. But it's like this really weird, it's got like Tina Marie on the front. And then it's got, it's like memorializing Rick James on the back. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that this is a legit t-shirt, in which case I would not I'm Rick be, James. I would not be selling this. Um, uh, I'll look it up. And if it is not legit, then maybe I'll use it as a prize or something. Cause I'm sure somebody out there would totally love to be. I mean, it's a, it's a legit in. vintage, um, well, it's not vintage. It's well, not vintage. It's vintage. 2004. All right. It's a, it's a, this is legit concert t-shirt, uh, label. So people do use this for Yeah, I just don't know why I don't know if Tina it's... Marie would be on the front and then there'd be a memorial. Got to do a little bit of research on that. Rick James. But I still grab it because I'm like, it's going to be like a buck or two. And that's like weird, right? Um, I got like a, 
Tina Turner uh, tour shirt from 2000. No idea what that's worth. So maybe anywhere 25 bucks, maybe 30 bucks. I don't know. Unless I might look it up and it might be something that like goes for a lot. Who knows? Um, I got a vintage Mickey Mouse shirt. So those I got always, the Minnie Mouse version of that. Those always the other do rack, well. Apparently. Um, yeah. So I just, oh, there was one I wanted to ask about because maybe somebody else will know because it's kind of hard Before to research. Before we do this. research. So this is a... Guns and Roses t-shirt. Okay, so it's a Guns and Roses t-shirt. It doesn't have anything on the back. It's not from like a specific tour that I know of. But the thing that I'm curious about is it it has if you look at it, it's got some Asian characters in well, it. Is that from the Chinese Democracy album? I don't know. I don't know Guns and Roses. I didn't so look it up. Sorry. If, if see if you look really close, you can see that it's got the I'm characters. A guns fan. I don't know if that's like Japanese or China. I, actually, I think that's Chinese. So it might be. So the tag is just That's a made, concert t -tag. Yeah, it's made in Mexico. So I don't know what to I mean, because if you look up Guns N' Roses t-shirt, yeah, you, you kind of have a few options to plus look. Walmart is even selling the re-release of like Guns N' Roses and Aerosmith and cheesy shirts. So yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. Um okay, you guys ready for the showstopper? Really? You're doing your showstopper already? Yeah, I got some other good stuff. All right. I got some other good stuff. I'm holding off on my show. I don't want to make everybody wait till the very end. I, I want to give, make you I wait. give them a little bit I'm of the goods right now. I'm gonna, I got another one. Listen, I got something today that I'm super excited about. But I got something real good right now. Um, so, Harley Davidson t-shirts. Always look at Har Harley Davidson t-shirts. Now, if they're not vintage, I will still pick them up sometimes depending on the graphics. If it has like a really cool, like especially like the ones that have like a huge like eagle on them. Mm -hmm. Um, if it has a cool graphic, if it's cheap, I'll pick it up because you can sell. You can do a pretty. pretty they always well sell for twenty five, thirty. Yeah, they're going to sell all right. Um, but vintage Harley T-shirts, if they're made in the USA, stuff like that, like I will tend to pick those up more often. But the holy grail, the holy grail of Harley Davidson T-shirts, guys, is three D emblem. And let me tell you, I found myself a three D emblem. Now it's not the holy grail because I, I'll explain that in a minute. But this particular one is from the nineties. Look at this, Harley Davidson, okay? And it is a grizzly bear. And if you look right here, this is from 1991. If you look right here, it does say 3D emblem. Mm -hmm. So anytime you see a Harley Davidson shirt that says 3D emblem on it, get that shirt. Because at the very least, it's probably gonna sell for, I, I mean, at least like 80 bucks you should be able to sell it for like 80 i mean i see them get sold for cheaper a lot of times because people underprice their stuff okay mm -hmm. quit doing it 3d emblem though especially from the 80s now the actual holy grail for 3d emblem go do a search harley davidson 3d emblem oh, search no, sold, hide, hide a low search si sold hide a low and i'm telling you the ones particularly the ones that have like the hog like they have like hog university um uh if they have like the pig on them those ones literally go for like a thousand dollars those ones those ones you shut your mouth those ones go for as much as a thousand dollars if not more um so if you ever see one with, i mean really any 3d emblem definitely pick it up but if you ever see a hog one oh man you are gonna be i still it. have never found a 3d emblem one in the wild and this one just got one yesterday for i, I found one other one dollars guys i found one other one at the bins and it was pretty ripped up, and I sold that one for about $100. So this one right here, this, this one, I'm saying this one, these ones. Uh, this one right here, I listed it. Right now, it's listed for $250. Um, I did have an offer, like, right away for $80. I'm um, not going to do it. I probably would sell it. I'd probably go as low as, probably no lower than $150 is what I would do. Um, but maybe I'll sell it for more. I'll let it sit around for a little while. It's not the only one up right now. Somebody else has it up for way cheaper, um, but let that's them crazy. sell it. But that's crazy. I'm gonna let them sell it for way cheaper. Uh, so anyway, that's my showstopper, and I'm pretty stoked about it because come on, come on, go ahead. All right. So um, I, this is not my showstopper, but this is one of the cool things I picked up yesterday. Same, that same, same sale. Same sale. Vintage 1980s, made in the USA, single stitch Farrah Fawcett T-shirt. What? Woo, woo, woo. what? Super uh, clear iron-on graphic without the. I mean, if only it would be better if it was she was the. It was the iconic shot in the bathing suit. That's a really cool one. But That's I'm gonna awesome. sell this for at least fifty dollars. At least there are not very many um, vintage Farrah yeah. shirts. Now, had um, this been a ringer tee, that would have been even more. Awesome. Right, or like baseball style or something. Baseball oh, yeah. jersey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But anyway, it's super crisp and clean. And usually, these old vinyl graphics tend to be cracked and peeling. If they've I don't been think it's been a lot. Worn. Um, I think it's been worn. Much. I think it's been worn, but it's not not bad. Yeah. 
So I'm loving that one. Uh, Again, wait about- a second. Two or three dollars. Binky's in the his house right now. Ooh, hey, Binky. Uh, one heck of a thrifter thrifter says that the Tina is going to bring money as well. I hope so. I mean, I haven't looked it up at all, but um, I'm excited about it. So uh, Christiane is loving, loving the Farrah t-shirt. Yeah. Okay. I was super jealous for sure. So something else I picked up was a whole lot of 90s, early 90s Tommy Hilfiger. Somebody's lucky that I don't like to buy and sell pants, guys, because you know how I feel about pants. But let me tell you, if I would have seen these pants, I would have gotten them and I would have forced myself to list some pants because these are awesome. So they're, these are uh, high-waisted mom jeans, size 11 Tommy. They're all women's. So that's the only, uh, you know, Tommy big flag, high-waisted mom jeans. That's awesome. Those are about $3. Um, I got a few other pairs, but these, these. Holy crap. These I'm going to stand guys. up so you can see these ones, right? <laughs> I got not one pair. Look at these. Look well, at these. I feel like I need to, I feel like I need to have Do my you need to put your heart. hand over your heart? Yeah. Uh, they're women's. I can, I can Look, hear the national anthem playing right now. Look at these ridiculous Tommy jeans. Not one pair. Wait, wait. Are these like flare? Or are they like boot cut? They are. They're kind of, I don't know. Wait, a little bit flare. Like flare. You guys, you guys. Somebody, Not one pair. somebody is going to love America so hard in these jeans. But two pairs. Ugh. High-waisted. What now? The only thing is that they're so small. They're like a size 7. Um, okay, it's maybe not that tiny, but you know, not anything my big butt is going to fit Apparently into. Apparently, Tommy Hilfiger only thinks skinny people love America. And I think America. that's wrong. I think that's wrong. But let me tell you, she thought that these, she was thinking they might not even be uh, vintage because they are so, as you say, They're crispy. so crispy. Um, they're so crispy, but they're no color run. They're vintage. 90s. Yeah, it says oh. actually most Tommy things actually have the date on the tag, and these uh, do not. But not on this particular one. She doesn't have them listed now. We just got them on Friday, so she needs to. She's gonna be taking pictures today, so she'll probably take pictures. These will be listed this week. So yeah, if, they'll get if there's something you're interested in, feel free to send me a message yeah. before they're. Um, well, they were just very concerned. They're listed. Lorna was very concerned that you get it listed before the Fourth of July because they you know, know Lorna Jane. The Fourth of July is coming. They'll be listed this week. There you go. Yeah, I can wear a, a size seven on my left toe. I can wear a size seven on my arm, I think. And that's about it. Uh, so those were garage sale. Those are the first garage sale we went to, yeah. Jimmy. Um, and they cost me about $3 a piece. This is the guy. Uh, this is the garage sale. It's the guy who actually sells on eBay. And he also sells, like, he does consignment at, at a furniture store here in town. And so he had like a bunch of stuff. And we exchanged yeah. information with him because he's like, yeah, I got a ton more stuff. We're going to go shop his stuff. So I'm like, so, listen, we're going to get in touch with you. And we're going to do a private appointment because I want to buy stuff. From because you. I'm always whipping out my card. I know it's yeah. so 90s to have a business card on you. But I'm sorry. It works at garage sales. Whatever. I'm not going to be like, I'm going to give you my cell phone number. No. So as far as streetwear goes, let me text like, you my number. I asked him, do you have any like sports jackets or anything like that? He's like, yeah, I do in storage. And he probably didn't have them out because it's like a hundred billion degrees here. And he's probably thinking, who's going to buy jackets? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to buy jackets, man. Yep. Anyway. And he had some really good stuff and we probably could have bought more, but I was not sure what his pricing was because he had nothing priced. So I just kind of made a big old pile. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, well, like, then I like, paid $40 for everything. And I was like, oh. I probably should have grabbed more. <laughs> right. Well, she she showed him his jacket and he was like, you know, pricey. He's like, oh, I just sold one of these for fifty dollars. And I'm like, ugh, he's gonna be one of those guys that's gonna be like, I sold this for on eBay for X amount of dollars, so now I'm gonna charge you forty. Uh, and then he charged her forty dollars for whole, like all of that stuff, forty bucks, guys. And all of my and there's stuff more. I mean, I have like six more shirts and pairs of pants downstairs that I didn't show you, plus a jacket that I'm about to show you. So, uh, your turn. Okay. So next, um, I'm gonna stick with yard sale day. Uh, we went to like a whole bunch of other places where it's like, I got like one thing here, one thing there. I did find you guys, these I'm not going to sell, but for five bucks, I did buy, um, there are these, uh, like serial killer, um, trading cards. They're really cool. They're like vintage from like the early nineties. And it's like, they've got like all of these, um, I think it's like just true crime kind of, I think some of them are like gangsters. Yeah. This one's like a mob dude, but there's like serial killers and mob dudes. Um, and then like the back, like tells like the story about them. I mean, I could sell these, I bought them for five bucks. I could sell them, um, for maybe like 40. Actually, I think these are all mob people. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, so I just thought they were super cool for me to keep myself. I'm not going to resell them. I don't Cause sell she likes them. the horror stuff. I like and... horror and true crime stuff. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to sell them, but I just thought that was really cool. And I would show you guys. Um, uh, but anyway, so we went to a bunch of different places. I didn't find a whole lot. And then we went to this place where, man, this lady had so 
much clothing. It was like I gave up and turned the air conditioning on and went into the car. Yeah, she like gave up. I was like, she it's had too so hot. much clothes. It's too hot to look through this stuff. I'm done. But there wasn't any. There weren't any clothes that I was really mm -hmm. that into. And then I saw like a whole bunch of shoes. And so I went and started looking at the shoes, and it was a lot of Nike stuff. And so I started looking at all the Nike stuff and I found, I ended up buying six pairs of shoes. She wanted $50 a pair, which was a bit high. Um, and so what I did is I picked out the ones that I was interested in and I gathered them all up. And so six pairs of shoes would have been $300. Um, and I ended up negotiating with her a little bit and ended up paying her $180 for all six pairs of the shoes. Some of the shoes, it would have been I wouldn't have paid $30 for by themselves, but I was using the bulk number as kind of a bargaining tool. Um, so let me show you real quick. Uh, the lower priced ones, um, like I got these Nike ones. Uh, so, you know, these will sell. There aren't even any available right now in the U.S. For some reason, they're all um, international ones. I should be able to sell these for like 80 bucks. Um, and so I paid 30, you know, so again, I wouldn't necessarily spend $30 on one item that I ha I'm only going to get 84. Um, but maybe I would, I don't know. Um, plus shoes are so easy. They're super easy to photograph and it's like, I don't have to measure anything. Um, ship and so, yeah, so it's just a lot, it's just pretty easy. And then this other pair right here, this pair right here, uh, again, I should be able to sell these ones for about 80 bucks. And listen guys, this is the great thing about like Nike and Adidas the same way. There's a lot of Nike stuff out there that's not worth much because there's just so much of it, but you can look it up. And so you can see right here, you see that uh, six digit number with a dash and then a three digit number. That six digit number tells you what the shoe is and the three digit number tells you what the colorway is. And so a lot of sellers, when they list their stuff, you can just look it up. Nike, plug those numbers into the search mm -hmm. and you'll be able to see right away the comps on them and know if it's worth buying. So these ones, maybe 70, 80 bucks. So those ones are like the lower valued ones. Um, and then I answer had, to answer heck of a thrifter, those Tommy jeans, pri don't price them too low. Oh no, I won't. I price my stuff high. We price stuff really and high. And I get my prices yeah. usually. So don't worry. They're not gonna um, be, they aren't gonna be too cheap. Another pair of Nike shoes. Uh, these ones, I, you know, these ones also maybe like 80 bucks. Um, you are so <laughs> not okay. All right. Uh, now let's get into the little bit of the higher price stuff, guys. These shoes right here, these ones, uh, I should be able to sell for like 150. Okay, so 150 used. right here. Used these ones. They're they're getting they're in good shape. They're in pretty good shape. So this guy, whoever he was, he was like I think her husband. All because all of them are size 13, which is yeah, pretty all decent, the same size. decent size. Um, I think the most popular size is like 10 and a half to 11. But uh, yeah, so about 150, I should be able to get for those. And then I have uh, a couple of pairs of Jordans. These right here, I should be able to get well, maybe 130 to 150. They're really good shape. And lastly, I got one more pair of Jordans. These ones go for a little bit more. And here's the thing. These two sh pairs of shoes, they're actually the exact same shoe. Like the, the first six digit part of the number is the same number. They're just different colorways. Um, this pair right here has a suede down here, and this pair is not so it's like kind of a like a metallic um, kind of thing going yeah. on. Yeah. But this particular shoe right here goes for more than this one does. Uh, this definitely 150, although I see some selling for more like 200 and up, even for a used pair. Um, so again, selling 30 bucks a piece, even the lower mm -hmm. price ones are going to sell, and these ones will um, bring the price up a lot more. So. I think it's a good deal. I spent 180. I can't add all those numbers up in my head right now, but I'll be making some money. So I never to answer one of the questions. I never used to put best offer on my items. I would just price it for what I wanted it for, and uh, that's it. I did start adding best offer back in recently, and it's been working out okay. I mean, I take it little by little. Not uh, so most of my stuff does have best offer on it now. Um, and then do we put everything international available on every listing? Yes, never. Uh, I, I don't. I will sell anywhere. Anywhere in the world, any item. Yep. As long as it's not restricted in that Me country. Too. And then to be honest with you, I just always put everything available everywhere. And mm -hmm. then if I cannot ship the item to the country, which has not happened to me yet, if I sell something and I can't ship it, I can always cancel the sale yeah. and there's a problem with the buyer's address. Um, it takes too long to go through and like do exclusions mm -hmm. for an individual item. Yeah. So 
I do best offer yeah. on everything, but I also price super high. And so I leave plenty of room for offers. So a lot of times I take offers that are a lot lower than what my price is. Mm -hmm. um, and then yes, I do international shipping. I direct ship all of my own stuff internationally, no exceptions. Yeah. Um, and no, do I have problems? Well, I've talked about this when we were talking about inter um, international shipping last week. Uh, you know, in the last 12 months, I've did about $20,000 in international sales. And it's about 20% of my sales of the last 12 months. Um, and I have maybe had a couple of issues and only one of those issues did not get resolved in my favor because it was a lost item. Um, and uh, I think I was out like $100, you know, so it's like $20,000 in sales versus 100. Yeah. I could have done GSP and then it wouldn't have been my problem, but then I would have gotten way less than $20,000 in sales. Yeah. So, and my last year's sales international were about 17,000. So mine's a good 17 to 20% of my sales as well. Uh, every year, um, I don't do priority international. I only do priority international if it's over four pounds. So I do, oh, yes. cal I do calculated shipping uh, yeah. for international. Yeah. And so I have yeah. two different, I have two different, um, if you go look at my, uh, the boss up, and list live show this last Wednesday. I actually go in and show about how I have my business policy set up and my shipping policies. And I actually show like how I set that up and I have a policy that's for everything under four pounds and everything over four pounds. So I use only use a priority for over four pounds and it works fine. Um, looks like Dana's gonna bail soon, but thank you Dana for helping us out today. Um, yeah, we're running a little bit over. We try to keep this under an hour because I know that, you know, it's, yeah. we lose uh, your attention, but we did uh, talk about a few things a little longer than usual. We've had more questions than we usually do. So yeah. we have more people participating live. So we really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Um, I've got to ask, uh, I'll start with a couple more things. So this is one of the things I picked up at that garage sale. And this was one of the items that I held back from, um, our little preview. And this is the thing that Katie was the most jealous about. I have talked about this in a previous haul and I also sold it within like a day of listing it at the mm -hmm. full price it hadn't even had time to go on sale yet so you some of you might remember when i sold this previously but check it so out so this brand kappa kappa is uh just like a streetwear brand so i got this jacket it's kappa jacket new holland um it the guy said it was new uh, i don't think it's new I, I think it's very uh lightly used if it's been used um and this particular one there's only like one for sale right now so really this will nice. sell for, I'm going to list it high, over $100. Um, yeah, if you remember, the one I had was actually like, wasn't it like a, like a sweatshirt jacket? It yeah. It was like a pullover, half zip, zipped. It had like a little bit of a, um, it was like worn, all, not a hole all the way through, but kind of worn on the shoulder. And so I listed it for 80 bucks, except uh, expecting that at some point it'd go on sale for 50% off and it only sell for 40 because it had like almost a hole in the shoulder. Um, I listed it for 80 and it immediately sold like within 24 hours for 80 bucks. Yeah. So that jacket it should go for way more. So I've got a few more really good things. I'll do two more and then, uh, then I'll wait and I'll show you my showstopper after Katie goes. Okay. Uh, so this is this big, huge, DC Collectibles, Justice League, Aquaman. Um, I don't know how big it is, 18 inches or something. I don't, uh, 13.37 inches high, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I picked him up. Uh, he is uh, new with damage. So basically, I paid $7 for this. If it were brand new, it would sell for around 130, between 130 and 150. Uh, the damage is that his hand is broken. So I'm going to glue the hand back on and disclose it and I will still probably get about $75 or more on it. So yeah. Uh, JG wants to know if we list to hire, even if there are a few, just like your item is good condition. Yes, yes. I always list hire because here's the thing. Not every listing is equal. Other people don't take returns or, or they don't ship everywhere or mm -hmm. they only use GSP when they do ship it internationally um, or they don't do free shipping or they don't do free returns. So there's all these little things that add up. Or they don't ship within 24 hours. Yeah. Somebody needs it faster. So yeah. So there's all these little things that add up to make your listing superior. If you do all of the best practices to basically what I call remove all obstacles, to make it as easy as possible for somebody to buy. Yeah. So the people are going to buy my stuff, even though it's more expensive than another listing that's right next to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, what do you mean it did not have time to go on sale yet? Basically, we well, both so currently the way it currently works, if you have a sale going on and if you set it up in a certain way, when you list new items, if they fall within that sale, like like I have like a rule category. set up where it's like everything in a specific category goes on sale. If I list a new item, 
within sometimes it's sometimes it's within like 20 minutes sometimes it takes a couple hours it'll automatically get marked it down the same. into the sale however they are changing that i think like on the 24th or 25th of this month um they remember if you remember in the latest seller update they have changed it to where anything new or any change in price um you will not be able to uh, put something on sale for 14 days after you list it so that's not going to work anymore but as it is right now it does still work that way all right go ahead um okay so this is something i picked up today so when we went to savers today i happened to look in the record section and i don't usually look in the record section because usually they just have really crappy polka records left but for whatever reason there were dozens actually about 50 because i bought them all uh about 50 records that had been dropped off that were um like DJ records and promo records, old school rap, um, hip hop, house music, scratcher records, that kind of thing. So um, with the sale, I mean, I paid about a buck a piece for them and I bought 50. Um, and some of them I'm gonna throw into a lot and they're not worth more than three, $4 a piece. So I'll throw them into a lot. And then the rest of them are worth 30, 40, 50, $60 a piece as I'm starting to research them. I just picked them up this morning, so I only researched a few, but one that stood out to me that I did research that I actually have two of, is a promo album for Melanie C. And for those of you that don't know who that is, uh, she's one of the Spice Girls, uh, I think Sporty Spice. And this is a promo album from her, for her. Uh, it's a single, and there are two of them. And um, it's an import, and it's worth about $100. Um, and I have two. So yeah, that was pretty much worth it right there. So if you're not a music person, um, an import, just, I mean, I guess it's kind of intuitive, but it's like, you know, so it's, so it was only available, it's made available only in another country. Yeah. And so it's an import. And so a lot of times they're worth a lot more because there's less of them available. So for people who are like big collectors, I found a couple that were like to... 40 or 50, but that was the highest priced one that I've researched yeah. <clears throat> so far. So I'm kind of in that particular one I can't find anywhere. So yeah. I'm definitely going to go. So already with just like a handful of the records, you already like, like quadruple, quadruple your, your money, money. Put into mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So that's not too bad. So, um, all right. Do you want me to do? You do one more, and then you'll you hit. Yeah, you'll and I'll close do close the show out with a with a show stopper because you will literally stopper. be stopping the show. Um, should we do another like our other prize real quick? Yeah. Okay. I got to come up with a question. Do you have a question? Think about something you've said. Anything? Is there any? Do you have a good question? Mm. Anything? Anything? Mm. You gotta think about it. Who was the wrestler on your shirt? Who was the wrestler on my shirt? No, I like how you shirt. whisper that. Like nobody, I know, like nobody, nobody here hear is gonna know what I say. <laughs> Who was the wrestler on the T-shirt, the memorial T-shirt that I uh, found? It was a wrestling T-shirt. Yes, the first person to answer that question correctly gets their pick of a uh, cat T-shirt. Yep, that's right. Well, or a boss T-shirt. Uh, what the heck is that? Is that his name? Who got it first? Fun stuff. Yeah, fun 24. stuff. Fun stuff. Twenty four. Some, Ooh, some dead, guy. dead guy. Yeah, pretty much. That's <laughs> that would be my answer. I didn't know who it was. All right, fun stuff. Twenty four. You are the winner. So uh, what were the? Now I don't even know where. Fun t-shirts. Yeah, t -shirts. Okay, the so cats you have, in space. You have cats in space. Or do you have this cool uh, Adidas um, about that boss life t-shirt? And these are all larges. And then the other one um, that you have the option of is the Thug for Life cat t-shirt. Um, they're all larges, uh, so you know. But you can always make a cool, tea, a cool pillow out of them if you. Cats in space. All right. All right. I stuff. agree. That's the best one. Send me a message. My email is down in the description, or find me on Facebook and let me know what your address is, so I can send get it out, out to, this to week. you. Um, all right. So uh, now I'm going to do a couple more things, and then you're going to do your showstopper. Is that what mm -hmm. we were saying? Okay. So we went today, and I hit. Uh, I was able to find a couple of cool things. Um, so I just wanted to show, I'll go really quick through a couple of them. This one is just a Tommy athletic, uh, vintage police jacket. It's not going to go for a, a huge amount, but it's, it's spelled out across the chest. Yes, which it is spelled out and embroidered. Um, police does really well. It's got the flag on the sleeve. I should be able to sell this for mm, 50 bucks. Um, there's a lot of them that go for less than that, but again, I do better listings and mine look better. I can demand better money. Um, eight 99, I got for 20% off, but fleece in general does really well. And Tommy fleece does great. Um, Mary also, Sullivan wants to purchase the thug life cat t-shirt. So send, uh, send Katie a message or. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you. and then I have, um, this, uh, Ooh, it's scratchy. Yeah. Cabela's it's, it's a wool. It's a really heavy wool, like pullover um, jacket, kind of sweater jacket, but it's like a shooting jacket. It's like a hunting jacket. So it's got the padding up here, um, here, and uh, and then inside it's like super insulated and it's got like this. Um, it's like making me stopper. hot. 
yeah, I mean, just holding is making it me hot. And uh, eight ninety nine, twenty 20% off of that. I should be able to sell this for about 50, 60 as well. Um, but yeah, just like anything that's like shooting, uh, hunting type yeah, stuff. Yeah, hunting stuff does sells really well. well. Um, okay, here's my, I mean, it's sort of a showstopper in the sense that I'm going to be able to sell it for a decent amount, but I did have to pay up for it. So I'm really excited about this. Could not believe I found this. Definitely would not be there waiting for me tomorrow morning had we gone for 50% off day. Um, this is a down, a really nice down San Francisco 49ers jacket. Uh, it's a puffer jacket. They call it a puffer jacket or puffy jacket. Um, this is a pro player. It is a vintage 90s USA um, pro player. It does say, I'm knocking stuff over here. It does say 49ers on the back. It's you can, it's in great, excellent, excellent condition. I don't know that it was really worn much. It's real, um, you know, it's got that awesome down thing where it just like squishes. It's really squishy. Uh, this, it was 35 bucks, guys, but I paid, I uh, got 20% off of that. Um, but I should be able to sell it for a minimum of $150. And here's the thing. It's a hundred dang degrees here in the Vegas area. It's really hot. I don't and know. I am still going to be picking up any jackets that I find if they're good jackets and I'm going to sell it and it could sell. This might sell tomorrow. It might sell next week. It, you know, it doesn't matter. Like forget about seasonal stuff. List it if you have it. If it's a good item, that's going to sell for a lot. It doesn't matter. I'm going to list it high and maybe it won't sell for a few months. Maybe it'll hit fourth quarter and then somebody's going to be ready to buy it because they love them some 49ers and they want to go out in style. There you go. Okay. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that. All right. That's it for me. You got your showstopper? I got my showstopper. All right. Okay. Let's get some, let's get some guesses out there. What could she possibly have really? found? Maybe you can give them some hints. What could she have found? That's her showstopper. It's vintage 70s. Mm -hmm. It's vintage 70s. It's, it's not clothing. It's not clothing. Um, what are some other things? Hmm. Hmm. It's something that you... Um... It, has, it is made from fabric. Okay. Okay. It is made from fabric. Anybody? 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 Of course, we got a delay here, so we'll just be sitting here going, anybody? Anybody? For like the next... <laughs> no, it's made from fabric, so... Uh... It's uh, it's soft goods, but not clothing. Mm -hmm. Disney sheets. That's a good guess, Barbara. Ooh, you're it's you're close, close, close. Ooh, oh, ooh, ooh, close. It is a. It's not Pendleton. It's but not a Pendleton, it is but it is a blanket. a blanket. All right, we got a blanket here. We got a blanket. Mm. I think you're gonna have to like step back. So I got this from a little old man at a garage sale, and apparently his neighbor bought it in Hawaii in the seventies, and so it's made in Hawaii. It is a bark cloth. Hawaiian blanket. So the fabric is bark cloth on the outside, and then the back is just a like a cottony polyester type of fabric. Now is that does it have a tag on it or was it handmade? No, I believe it's handmade. Um, it's handmade. It's made almost like a quilt because it's got all little squares. Mm -hmm. So it's it's this hideous, fabulous mid-century orangey yellow and brown and it's yeah, Hawaiian the fabric, a little tapas fabric, but it's got some pineapples and some little tiki gods and it's kind of cool. Can you talk really quick? Cause I saw somebody, I, th I believe it was, might've been in the boss group or somewhere. Somebody had asked about bark cloth. What is bark cloth? So bark cloth is basically just a cotton fabric. It's a cotton fabric that is, um, that is, has a, a very uh, stiff and scratchy texture to it. Um, you know, I'm sure somebody has a better definition than I do as to why they call it bark cloth, but it's just, it's got like striations in the fabric, if that makes sense. It's not a flat fabric and it's got a little bit of a stiff and scratchy feel. It's hundred percent cotton, but it's a thick cotton. Yeah. So you'll see if the you find it a lot of like, um, it, it's, it's, you know, uh, pillowcase, uh, not pillowcases, like you'll find it in uh, vintage draperies and uh, Hawaiian shirts and Hawaiian dresses. It's a fabric that's really used in yeah. with uh, vintage mid-century type. Um, yeah, I don't even goods. I don't even really buy like I don't do button-down shirts very much um, either. But yeah, it used to be made from bark. That's I mean that's yeah. why they they say it. But yeah, and so what did Barbara say. Drunkard's Path is the name of the quilt block. Whoa, Dang, girl, you are good. That's awesome. Write that down. I'm writing that down, Barbara. Uh, anyway, uh, so I don't really buy, for the most part, I don't buy button-down shirts, but I will sometimes like scan the um, the Hawaiian shirt or like the short sleeve button-down shirt aisle. And occasionally I will see something that's bark cloth. The last time I found a bark cloth thing, it was it was clearly from the tag. It looked like it was from about the 70s. And I sold it for $80. 
So I'm telling you guys, get familiar. If you ever have a chance to look at some uh, bark cloth piece of clothing um, to familiarize yourself with what it looks like and what it feels like. It, brand doesn't even matter. Like again, this no, is probably it's vintage. Homemade. And there's still a few things that you'll find that are more current that are made out of bark, bark cloth, but not many, not yeah. very many. So what are you gonna sell this for? I'm gonna list it for a couple hundred and see what it goes for. I, I have not been able to find any blankets or quilts made out of bark cloth, so. Yeah. yeah. Or it seems like, didn't you find something, but it was like just a solid, it was no pattern or something like that. No, I'm never. Crazy? You're crazy. Okay. I've thought. sold it in. Um, I've sold some bark cloth uh, curtains in the past. They were it uh, like an Asian theme, but that was years before I knew you. So it was yeah. many years ago. All right, JG wants to know what order I source men's clothing. When I go into the store, I hit the jackets first thing. Then I go to the sweatshirts because the sweatshirts usually have like um, track jackets and hoodies and stuff like that. So I'll go to the sweatshirts next. And then I go to the t-shirts. Then once I've done with the t-shirts, I will go look in the sweater aisle, um, mm -hmm. sweater and like knit shirts. So it's like long sleeve shirts. Um, and then if I have time and I want to, I will kind of look quickly at like polo shirts and long sleeve shirts a little bit. Yeah. And then if I'm really needing to do, to do some more looking, cause she's like out there shot, we're together and she's I taking forever. forever. Cause I, shop I will go day. look at the jeans and I might grab something. If I find like some silver tab jeans or something, I will grab them for her. Cause right. I, cause right. I don't want to have to list them cause I hate doing Well, it. actually mid century does encompass some of the seventies as well. Uh, it's fifties, sixties and seventies, but there are different, very, uh, definitely different subdivisions within mid century. There's mid century modern and then there's mid century in general. Um, so, uh, beauty lover said mid centuries, fifties and sixties. I agree with you. It also does encompass some of the seventies. Um, um, and, and chenille bedspread, you're right. That would be more of a, a 40s, 50s, 60s yeah. type of thing. Uh, uh, so yeah, it really does depend. Um, I've been selling vintage and, and antique. And uh, it, at this point, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, the terminology for vintage and antique has, has definitely shifted in the reseller world. Uh, you know, vintage used to be 25 years or older. Antique used to be 100 years or older. And that's the true definitions of those eras. But in, unfortunately or fortunately, it has changed and it does definitely encompass different things. So to get the right keywords and to get the right eyes on your uh, on your items, I would definitely, and I will put mid-century in this, or just put MCM in this, uh, not yeah, MCM, just mid-century, not mid-century modern. But um, but it, yeah, it, in the truest sense of the terms, you know, mid-century is definitely more of the 50s, 60s, Eames era, Atomic, mm -hmm. Starburst, that type of thing. Uh, but it does encompass the 70s as well. Karen wants to see that again. So hold it up. Uh, JG asked me where shoes fit into my order of thrifting. I actually generally don't thrift shoes. I will like very quickly look in the men's shoe section at the end. Um, but I found that most of the thrift stores don't really have any good shoes out. Um, especially like because of the type of stuff I'm getting, like usually like these uh, streetwear kind of shoes, a lot of times they're not in good enough condition in the used or like Savers puts all of their shoes that might be worth anything back behind a case and they generally are priced way too high for it to be worth it. So for the most part, I do sell a lot of shoes, but almost all the shoes that I sell, I actually get at Ross or Burlington or Marshall's. Um, I actually buy those new. I prefer to buy them new. Um, and I go to like Adidas. The Adidas outlet is a great place to buy, to get like discounted shoes to, th um, to flip. So for the most part, I actually don't thrift shoes that much. So I happen to be at that sale, that garage sale where she had like a ton of them and they were in great condition. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, generally I, most of the savers, I don't bother even. Yeah. Like, I'll look very quickly, but they're, they're never really. I do. Right. I mean, I obviously I find uh, shoes a lot there. So. Yeah. Um, so I think, I mean, that's pretty much the end of our stuff. Um, again, I've got to do a little bit more research on some of these records. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. And you're right. Somebody just said Mel B is the Spice Girl, not Melanie C. So maybe the whole Spice Girl reference was wrong. Uh, but just, Melanie C, and it's still Melanie C, the person that I looked up and the promos from this particular There's person. There's like a letter in do there. Do sell for a sort lot. Of so, kind of similar. Like, yeah, they do sell for a lot. So um, I again, I looked it up about five minutes before the show. So yes, you're absolutely right. Mel B is a Spice Girl. I don't know if Mel C is. I don't know who the other person's people name are in the group i don't really ah. know somebody posh victorious yeah. beckham yeah she's married to that hot soccer player um, that's all i know yep and yes we are excited for ebay open i'm very excited for ebay open it happens it's like mm -hmm. a little over a month from now um we're really lucky that we already live here in the vegas area so for us 
Um, it's we're, we don't really have to do a whole lot more than drive to uh, where it's going to be at. Mandalay Bay. Um, but I am super excited. I'm really excited, you know, because I've been doing the channel and the Facebook group and stuff like that. Um, you know, last year Met I was a lot more people. Last year I was a Shine finalist, so it was super, super exciting. And um, so there were a lot of people that I got to meet, and it was like a really fun, like adventure the whole week. It was so fun, and I got to meet all kinds of people. But now, oh, so I was right. Mel C is sporty spice. All right, all right. Yeah, oh, Mel, Mel B is scary spice. All right, I was correct. Shoo. Phew. Made me nervous. Uh, any, anyway, uh, this year, like I said, because I've been doing the, the um, YouTube show and having uh, Victoria do a lot of it with me, um, and because of the boss group, it's like I feel like uh, I know a lot of people even more than I did last year. Last year, I was relatively new to the community. Um, so I'm really excited about meeting people, and especially after like this last week and how awesome everybody's been. Like, I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of hugs going around. Awesome. Um, I'm yeah. a super, I'm super friendly. I'm super upbeat. Like I generally am just like, I'm just, I love life guys. I'm high on life and, and, uh, and diet Coke. So seriously, flipping particles is the convention in Grand Rapids eBay related. No, it's not. It's a, it's a, a yearly convention that I go and volunteer my time with, uh, for one of the charities that I, I volunteer with and I work with. Um, so no, not eBay related at all. No, uh, but Katie will be going with me and volunteering her time as well. She went for a couple of days last year and mm -hmm. met some of my peeps there. It's something I do every year, and yep. it means a lot to me. And for the so Phoenix Society, so if you were interested in like knowing what it's about, it's the Phoenix Society, and the, they put on. They're based in Grand Rapids, but usually the convention is uh, in a different state every year. Um, and it is for burn survivors, and um, it's an amazing, amazing event to go to. Um, so I'm really excited about it, but yes, I'm super excited about eBay open and I hope I get to see a lot of you guys there. Um, because I'm just, I'm stoked to like meet a lot of you in person. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for coming and watching the show. We did run a lot of interaction. Over. We went over about 20 minutes more than we usually do. We're usually about yeah. an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. So not yep. every show we, but did, that's okay. We did have a little bit of an attrition rate. I think we're up about 200 watchers at live at one point. Yep. Now we're down to about 157. So I apologize if we lost you. We ran a little long. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you guys for coming. Um, again, please come and join the Fa Boss Facebook group. It's a super awesome, fun community. Um, and we love Casey. Today's his birthday. This Yay! Is, it's, uh, it's Casey's birthday today. So. It's Casey's birthday today. The young lad just turned 33. 30. 33. 33. 33. Yeah. She's well, Oh, young. no, it was Riley. Ryan Roots just turned 30. Yeah, last he just week. turned 30. These um, babies. They're babies. Tiny little babies. I'm still, I'm still like hanging on to my 30s by a thread. Like, I've got it. I've got it for one more year, guys. And yeah, then, I don't, let's, let's not talk be, about our 30s. I'm going to be like the coolest 40 year old that it's like my birthday next week ever walked the earth, guys. I'm going to be pretty cool, okay? I'm going to be one of those people where they're like, why is she still dressing like that when she's 40 years old? And I'm going to be like, I don't care. I'm cool. Flipping okay? particles, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Yeah, very cool, I've, very been, cool. I've been a f several years until I'm 50, but uh, 40 is in the rear view mirror. I'm just sure. waiting to like hop on board uh, that senior discount. Like, could you hurry it up? Seriously? Yeah, because it's somebody like somebody called me her mother. You no, know, it was our. We had our friend Daryl with us, and we were going to eat. And the guy said something like, "You guys are so cool. Look at your cool hats." Because Daryl was wearing like a he was wearing like a Harley Davidson hat, and I had this hat on. He's like, "Look at your cool hats," and then you got your mom with her cool hair. And uh, it was kind of you guys. I almost okay. decked the waiter. In no way does she look like she could be old enough to be my mother. Or Daryl's mother, who Daryl, by the way, he is he's older. Way, than, he's like he's six older years older, older than me. He's older than both of us. But uh, it was hilarious. And then Daryl started asking if we could get um, if we could get a family discount, and uh, which I uh, think we should have gotten because I mean because he was insulting. <laughs> it was so yeah, super funny, Lorna. Not me with this haircut that I. Hate. She's like, I got my mom it's hair. The mom hair. Like you don't like the guy was an idiot. Like I don't. So my hair is too short. And, and like, it. why would you ever? It's like you never ever, unless you can see someone literally giving birth in front of you, you never ask them. Oh, so when's the baby due? Unless there's like, an arm dangling out. You're yeah, not, you're I not. need to see visual proof before I ever say something like that. But man, there are people who do that. It's crazy. And he wasn't a kid. That's the thing. The guy was probably my age or older. And he's like, yeah, your mom's got cool. I was like, Daryl's like, where's the family discount? <laughs> Beginning and new always says that they always thought I was in my early twenties. Hey, yeah, man, I'm like 22. I'm not that much I'm of a like, cradle robber. I'm like 22, guys. Thanks, beginning <laughs> anew. I'm not really a cradle robber. No, I was born in 79, so. Yeah, she's only four years younger than me. It's true. So there you go. Do the math. That's how old I am. Yeah, I will just, be 43 on Friday. I just look young and innocent, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't, it probably doesn't hurt that, like, I dress like a 12-year-old boy. So. Right. She yeah. does. 
and anyway, have, and actually. All right, let's one. wrap this up. Let's okay. wrap this up. Uh, so guys, join the Boss Facebook group. We will be, for those of you that are new to the channel, um, come and join us on Wednesdays when we have our Boss Up and Live uh, show, Boss Up and List show, sorry. Um, and that happens at 11 a.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time on Wednesdays. And if you're in the Boss Facebook group, we have the Boss Up and List uh, virtual listing parties all day that day. But we do listing challenges every day. But that's our next show is at 11 a.m. on Wednesday. I think this this week we're going to be going back to doing a store review of somebody. We're going to pick somebody who is a, a new six months, a, or six months or less, less on, on eBay. eBay. And we will be doing a live store review with them. Um, we like to do those so that everybody can learn like how to make your store better and hopefully get mm -hmm. more sales. Um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet. And make sure you hit the notification bell next to it if you want to be notified when I put new content up. But seriously, guys, thank you so, so much for coming and joining us today. We had an awesome time. This was fun. Um, was I love fun. the interaction. I love when we have a lot of live people in the chat, uh, not just the same people all the time, although we love our regular watchers and viewers too. Uh, JG, it does, show, it does show the, the, sh the store name when we do our store reviews. Um, we have to get brave souls in who are willing to put it all out there and have everybody looking at their stuff. Um, so it, it does show the store. Um, so if you are interested in the future of being a part of one of our uh, live shows where we do a store review, you can always message me um, and I keep a list of people. Yeah, she does all the choosing. I just, yeah, I, I, I just show up. That's true. She just shows up. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, thanks again, guys. And we will see you next time and go out have some fun, get some work done and generally just boss up.